Hello everyone, my name is Bradley, I have a Brad Taste of Music, and today we're going to be looking at Trojan Horse Samples, which is, I guess, uh, yeah, it's a strange name, so let me explain. Uh, this is my own name for this kind of stuff. For example, I'll show you the song Kill Jill by Big Boy with Killer Mike and Jeezy. It starts off with this long, drawn-out Vocaloid sample that is sure to, you know, draw a few eyes and get people like, huh, it's a big triple question mark moment, especially if you're playing this somewhere that is uh, less forgiving of this kind of stuff. You know, at, at least in this community, you hear some Vocaloid, you get a couple people like, oh my god, oh my god, I love Hitsune Miku, and I'm just like, bruh, chill. However, all of a sudden, okay, after the sample ends, boom, it's the hardest song ever. Literally out of nowhere, it just becomes like the hardest shit ever. It's an amazing blend of Southern hip hop veterans coming together. Uh, I'm looking for songs that have immerse, or immense payoffs in the beginning uh, with setups that almost imply a large disappointment or have the listener at least cu uh, curious and confused. Um, and yeah, uh, if you think that there's, and, and I am looking for samples, but if there's an example here that isn't a sample, I also uh, am more than open to listening to that. Let me show you the first example here with Kill Jill. <laughs> See what I'm saying? It's like, she's spitting, finally good singing. The AI takeover is among us. Show me what say. Show me what that mouth do. Just kill him softly with my press. Oh, Self-made is the best shit ever. ever. Exactly. So from the very beginning, it's just like, what what the hell is this? Right? But then as soon as that drop comes in, it's like, oh, there's so much bass in it's killer Mike. And you know Killer Mike's gonna bring some amazing stuff. He does the bass kicks. It it ends up being amazing. So uh that's kind of what I'm looking for today. Things that are unexpected that end up kind of I guess blowing expectations out of the water, which I think can be a really powerful tool with music. So we're looking for that kind of stuff. There, sorry, in my peripheral, I see a. I don't. I'll show you guys. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. You see that moving GIF over there? That's what caught my eye. That's DJ Khaled pointing at me. That's what's distracting me right now. Oh, It's So Quiet by Bjork. First listen, I was not expecting a beautiful jazz ensemble followed by wonderful vocals from Bjork. When that trumpet kicked in, I couldn't help but put on a smile. Such a great song. Uh, this is actually a cover of a song. So if you knew the original, then I guess you would probably know what was coming. Uh, but yeah, this is a And so peaceful until about a guy you wanna love, you wanna cry until so it's over. Starts another big riot. I think this is a pretty good example, but specifically because it is designed to be a fake out, starting off so quiet, quite literally uh, trying to show that things are just very calm and then bam, you fall in love and it's like a repeating cycle. It does this over and over again, uh, constantly falling in love and then it's over. And then it gets back to being quiet, which I think it does an amazing job displaying. Uh, so yeah, it makes perfect sense too with uh, what it's going for. Radiohead is not as good as Black Bear. You spam this constantly in the chat and now you spent two dollars so that it's even even more obvious. How big is my liked songs library? 3.7 thousand songs. We Invent You by Unwound starts off with a, two, uh, with a two minute drone sound which feels like it's taking forever before transitioning into those bright guitar motifs. Uh, which further continues in pulling in the listener into the soundscape of the track. It perfectly sets the tone of the album, and Leaves Turn Inside You is unlike anything fans have heard previously from the band signature post hardcore sound. This album is l so good. It's amazing. It's it's such a immersive experience. And this is an interesting example because I remember going into this thing uh, without knowing anything about the band and being like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is pretty chill. And then it just sort of transforms from there. Um, yeah, a, a weird choice indeed. I would highly recommend this album to anyone, though. This is amazing. With the last one. DJ Khaled, we the best. Who we, we know? When do they stop tuning their instruments and play the music? That is the music. Morning. Oh, the one. Oh, the one. 
Ende. Man, rap today fucking sucks bad. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. These fools ain't spitting no type of dope shit. So yeah, the song goes from a long drone to transforming just into a rock song. Um, I feel like this isn't the most explosive or extreme example, especially for me. I mean, personally, I, I wasn't too surprised by it as much as I am just sort of uh, like interested through reflecting on it as it's like, oh, yeah, look at that. It, it did just sort of transform in that way. I think it helps the fact that the music that follows is so amazing and the drone is very easy to listen to. It does go on for forever. Um, but I feel like that does kind of add to the surprise of it when the song actually goes somewhere uh, completely different. Overall, I think it's a pretty good example, mostly just for the fact that you guys need to go listen to this album. It's amazing. Really amazing. Like, really, really, really good. Time by Pink Floyd starts off with a bunch of loud alarm clock sounds, chimes, and it leads into a minute of rototoms that creates a lot of suspense because you never know what the rest of the band will uh, will come in, but eventually it does and goes on to be one of the best songs by the band with some iconic and depressing lyrics uh, and one otherworldly guitar solo. I think this is actually a pretty good example if it is what I remember. Ah! Does it make you anxious about the passing of time? Yeah, it just reminds me that I didn't do my homework for this week. But when I was in jail, I was low-key. Shout out to supporters that wrote me, eat food, work out, and then go sleep. Bring back crabs. When I was in jail, it was low key. Food work out of the ghost sleep. You got pretty Gary and both feet. Make us know we got God with us. Something to show you the way. Anyways, funny enough, I was actually thinking of a different song. I was thinking of money. Uh, but time is a very good example, as it's just a straight up, you know, clock jump scare, which I guess gets the point across. Um, yeah, sure. Good example. But money, I feel like, is also a good example. Mr. Krabs! Mr. Krabs! Even though it is still the money sample going on throughout the uh, song, whatever, I still think that the starting off with a bunch of random uh, cash sounds is still uh, pretty interesting in the way that they go about it. Uh, regardless, yeah, that's not going to be the only Pink Floyd uh, examples we see today either, so. <laughs> The Moon by The Microphones is a classic example of this. The first minute of the song is, base, uh, is a basic guitar loop that doesn't seem to go anywhere until seemingly out of nowhere it explodes into a gorgeous arrangement of instruments that almost drown out everyone's singing. It doesn't seize until the song ends. Overall, an absolutely stunning track. This song is so good, I get shivers even thinking about it. I could go on all day, all day about this shit. Yo, Space Ashes, thank you. All day, I could go on all day about this song. All right. I'm feeling. Okay. This album stinks. Shut up, Meg. Anyways, uh, yeah, this is an amazing example as the first minute almost feels just like a meditative entry point and there is a huge uh, subversion of expectations as the drop comes and it's brilliant. And if you haven't heard this whole album, it's just as good as this. Um, yeah, I mean, this, I'll just say, it's like, it's easy 10 for me, this entire album, so... In the Flesh by Pink Floyd, an amazing way to kick off one of the greatest albums of all time. It's definitely a bit of a jump scare that puts you on edge of your seat and prepares you for the album uh, to be quite dark and unsettling. Also, a quick shout out to Time. Wait, is this off the same album? Oh, it's The Wall. Oh. Okay. 
Okay. Doug Walker's The Wall is better than Pink Floyd's The Wall. Can, I, can someone explain how this is an example of it? Is it just because it has the jump, set, jump scare in the very beginning, or is it because of the little spot beforehand? I don't actually see how this is a, a, an example of what I'm looking for at all, and yet this was something that was very popular that a lot of people were co-signing and saying that this is... Uh, so it is just the intro, like the little intro scene here. Oh, okay. Okay, you know what? I do get it. I, I get it, actually. Uh, hearing that again, I, I missed that. It's so subtle. Like, it's so quiet and so subtle that it... it, it... <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I understand it now. Title track on David Bowie's Station to Station starts off with a full minute of noise imitating a train building up to speed. The following portion of the song is dark and hypnotic with, uh, and the lyrics reflect this. To a new listener, this section might seem odd and difficult to get into, but around the halfway point, the song erupts into one of the catchiest and most danceable grooves and keeps up the momentum for another five minutes. Oh my god. Fusion of prog, funk, and disco. It's Bowie's longest studio recording and one of the greatest art rock songs I've, uh, I've ever heard. Okay. DJ Khaled! I mean, yeah, it's kind of going nuts over my headphones. My fucking ears! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Zingo. Oh! I'm waiting for it to get, become a dance song like I was promised. Yeah, so I mean, if, if this is kind of how it continues on uh, throughout it, um, yeah, I get it. The start is weird, it's very noisy, but it does make sense and I think it does add to the overall aesthetic and feeling of this track. Um, yeah, it could have gone anywhere from where it began, and uh, then it, again, does something kind of dark, and now all of a sudden it's at a dance uh, tune, but most impressively about this, I feel like, is the fact that it all still makes sense and works as a full song. I'm surprised. Uh, these examples were not exactly what I was expecting, um, but I'm, I'm enjoying it. When the Sun Hits by Slow Dive, not a sample-based one, but the song definitely starts off very mild and has an immense payoff by the time it hits the one-minute mark. A very dreamy atmosphere uh, instantly goes into shoegaze bliss and a beautiful chorus. Still haven't heard this album. Oh, it's this song. Yeah, I get it. It starts off very subtle and then becomes super noisy. I've heard this song before, so maybe I'm just not that surprised by it, but uh, it's one of those that's like, yeah, the more I think about it, it does actually fit the criteria very well. Uh, if you're considering, say, um, the moon, for example, right? I don't know. I, I think it works. I think it works overall. Um, certainly not what I was expecting with this prompt or whatever, but I, I think it still kind of gets the idea across where it starts subtle and kicks in and the song kicks in and uh, things kind of get real. So, not bad. I feel like people just submitted songs that have intros, like I'm missing the concept here. Yeah, I kind of feel the same way. Um, I, I, I am sort of looking for a bit more, I guess. But I guess we have to see, you know? We have to see. Wars by Billy Woods. It starts with a very particular metallic instrument sample that isn't really playing a coherent rhythm or a tune. The song really kicks in once the sample is looped. And, uh, and some menacing but quiet snares enter the mix, creating one of the coldest beats I've ever heard. It's amazing how catchy they, uh, they were able to make such a bizarre sample sound. See, this, whatever the hell this is, I have a feeling this... Oh, wait, I've heard this album. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember this song. Okay, yeah. Why am I subscribed to Trump? 
that's a Hearthstone player. Poor wash, poor, never broke again what he said on the farm. Sweet water out, dip with salt. Very simple example, but it works very well as, again, it's like you hear this, you don't really know where it's going, but you're right, as soon as the, the, the beat comes in and it loops, oh, it sounds like incredible. Oh. Oh, that's really good. Oh, man. Man, I forgot. Damn, that shit, that's a really good example. Because it's like, you don't really know where it could go, but then when it does show up and it, ah, oh, it, it clicks so nicely. Pretty good. How much to force your suggestion in? Um, impossible. Anyways, um, I have another example for you guys. One that a lot of people might recognize. That's right. Punk Weight. Uh, this, look, I love this album. This song, I feel like, is another prime example of this where it completely subverts expectation and transforms beyond what it originally shows you. Um, I, I don't know if this is going to show up on the suggestions, but I feel like this is one of the most violent and extreme examples of it. Uh, so enjoy. I guess all my examples of all weeb shit. Anti-dude sample. So yeah, it goes from uh, an obscure, strange sample that honestly has very little to actually do with uh, anything, but then it just builds up and it keeps adding in more drums, and then when it drops, it's just basically a giant, like, it, it just feels like it just rips open a rift in whatever was there and destroys everything that was in it. Um, yeah, I love this song, and I think that this this is another prime one uh, that I think would be uh, involved in this whole thing. It's a ho scarer. It is indeed a ho scarer. Soft as shit. Next one is uh, re uh, real. Uh, uh, I mean, it's not technically you know the N word uh, if it's spelled like that. You know. Uh, Wait. Can I really sit in one of my uh, uh, why is it getting hot in here? Uh. Anyways, that, that song by JPEG Mafia. The song lures you in uh, with a unique vocal sample by uh, Old Dirty Bastard. I was going to say Rich Dirty Bastard for a second. Uh, it quickly builds into an absolute banger. The booming bass and the violent percussion is very different from the vocal chop that makes the song so intriguing in the beginning. It com uh, commands your attention throughout, and I think it's a great Trojan horror sample. I agree. I love this, especially if you don't actually know what the original is. I eventually learned what it is, but before figuring it out, yeah. You think you know me. I can't stop listening. It's so addictive. Anyways, uh, yeah, I, I love this. I think it's an amazing example. I think it's everything that I possibly could look for um, with this video as the beginning is just, you know, uh, Yeah, it turns into a beat. It's amazing. I remember you was conflicted, misusing your influence. These Walls by Kendrick Lamar always comes to mind whenever I play this song in public or in my car. I'll go to the lyrics and skip forward. Yeah, the, the, the moaning in the beginning. I understand the point of all of it, but still really uncomfortable. After it's over, though, we get one of the best songs on the album, so I'm able to put up with it. Yeah, it works very well contextually in the album, but I feel the exact same way if I ever listen to this uh, album in the car with someone, which, by the way, is a very white person thing to do. It really is. Maybe it's not, but <laughs> I feel like <laughs> it's the number one rated album of all time. You want to hear it in the car with me? I remember you was conflicted. They got a real sample of your mom, by the way, on this. But uh, but yeah, the uh, I'll just say the intro of this is uh, is very strange. I mean, it makes sense, but still, it's it's strange to have it as a musical piece. Mildly awkward, but still does. 
The song itself is amazing. What's Trojan Horse sample mean? Basically, it means that it's kind of setting up for things to be disappointing when you hear it immediately, but then it completely switches it around, I guess is the, the general idea of it. I might do something where it's like the opposite, where it starts off super promising and then just turns to shit. I think that would be also a really interesting one. Bait and switch. Yeah, exactly. Kind of bait and switch. This morning, you've got time for a hot home-cooked breakfast. Super Fast Jellyfish by Gorillaz featuring De La Soul and Gruff Rise. It starts with a sample of an old Swanson microwave commercial establishing a weird and psychedelic vibe, but then the drums kick in. Yeah, this is a good example. Song goes in a much more funky and smooth place with De La Soul's rapping and Gruff's... Uh, Gruff Rise singing. The beginning says the tone song very well. It's a weird and psychedelic vibe holds up for the whole track. Uh, it does leave you a bit confused and definitely interested as to where the song is heading. I love this. I love De La Soul. I didn't know it was De La Soul as a kid. I didn't know anything about De La Soul, but the song makes so much sense for them uh, looking back. This morning, you've got time for a hot home cooked breakfast. The Wave Minutes. Hey. Are you kidding? Yo, pretty packages of frosted delights. Ah. Rappers of many bite sizes. Man, are you freaking blind? It's a rock. All mixed in the pot full. King Neptune and his water breathers. No snail thing too quick. Gotta have it super fast. Oh, whole lot of breakfast you've got time for. Super fast. It's a good example, and I like the fact that, uh, especially even here, it comes back in as it kind of uh, it starts off as like the, the weird intro for this track, but then it's all kind of tied back together. It's really great. Uh, really good example. Red eye of the dawn. Neon by Jockstrap. It starts with this uh, gentle acoustic guitar and vocals. And if you're unfamiliar with Jockstrap's work, you might just think that you're in for a folkish experience. Then boom, a weird electronic instrumentation comes in. Uh, but still, it's very gentle. You might think, oh, it's kind of experimental, but still sweet. But then uh, it even goes back to the acoustic. But then the song just evolves into this weird, very metallic piece, which still retains part of the initial beauty, but a bit more aggressive with the instrumentation. And George's vocals have this distorted filter on them, sometimes sounding like it's clipping. It's clipping, bitch. I think I've heard this song. Yeah, I definitely have heard this song. Jack Quiet. Of the dawn, cross the hill. Fuck. Fuck all you hoes! Detroit till I die, motherfucker! And like <laughs> okay. Hey. Aw. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Shit. Go down over the We'll make it to Is it worth it? take me home, I'm scared. Oh wow. Yeah, it is. Wow. You know what's so funny? I think I was so desensitized when I first listened to this album. Like, that I didn't even think anything of this song or, like, this project at all. Like, I think I just listened to this and I wasn't even, like, phased by it. But it's it's fun listening back with that, that like, you know, insight of, yeah, it does start off really subtle, but it's surprising just how insane and off the deep end it goes. No, like, for, for some, like, I don't know, man. Sometimes I just listen to an album and I'm like, I hear weird shit and I'm like, oh, here we go. You know, starting off with a fake out, it's kind of predictable. Uh, into going into something more intense, but I don't know. I still think it's quite impressive, and the lengths that it goes is quite quite nice. <laughs> Starlight by Dave has a really strange hypnotic reverse Sinatra sample at the beginning that might put some people off, and then it goes straight into a great romantic wordplay laden uh, hip hop banger, whilst keeping the sample in the background all throughout. DJ Academic's Taste Playlist. It's hard to hate on the truth. I'm living in enough men hate with the lies instead. I DJ Khaled! I do know my man, but I don't trust him. First hundred elastic bands, plastic bags. Here's an example. I, I get it. I mean, this, this, ex yeah, yeah, it's kind of a weird warp sample. Maybe it's not the most exciting example, but it, it does work. It does fit the criteria. 21st century schizoid man, the first 50 seconds sound like white noise and static, but then the band shocks you with wailing sax, a mean guitar riff, bombastic drums, and then it comes in with the iconic vocals. Yeah, these are the guys who sampled Kanye, by the way. What's up, Floyd? My, ex uh, my issue with this example is it's not very deceptive at all. It's just like, um, 
Like it, it, it feels like it's so nondescript and just sort of just exists as like dead space that I feel like you could even say this for like say, like I with Godspeed's projects like the the big ones where there are those like large empty moments of silence between between shit happening where there's like occasional drones, <laughs> you can make an argument for that as well, but I would say that it's just sort of padding rather than uh, a deceptive change, so um, that's kind of my my opinion on the whole thing. Ghost Hardware by Burial. Uh, apparently, people really agree with this one. Um, it starts off very low key. Do people actually know who this guy is? Oh, hi. I don't know. Anyway, it starts off low key with nothing but vocal samples and ambient pads. Give the idea that it's going to be some glitchy ambient interlude, which Untrue had plenty of already. Then the best beat of all of Untrue comes in. And the song develops into an absolutely incredible payoff straight away and brings you uh, along the journey. So, my issue though is I don't actually even remember what song is uh, from this album, but a lot of the songs sound very similar. They have a very similar vibe. I trust me. I love this album. I oh wait, which one is this? Yeah, yeah, this one. Yeah, I don't really think that this is a great example. I'm just because again, it's like you listen to the previous song and it's gonna be no surprise what this is. You listen to the song before that and I feel like it's gonna be no surprise what this is. Okay, no, just... It's not a good example, but I'll take any excuse to listen to Burial. Yeah. Uh, America's most blunted, blunted. One of the weirdest intros I've heard on an absolutely fire song. I'd say also for the outro. <laughs> uh, the intro is pretty mysterious with what sounds like a train station. Then a guy talking about uh, letting his uh, bruise blood. Uh, and then it becomes really hazy for a second with a bunch of people just drone on talk while getting high. Uh, yeah, I, this might be a good example, actually. Like open the bruise up and let some of the bruise blood come out to show them. <laughs> You know, I remember I listened to Mad Villainy uh, while I was high once because I thought it would improve it. It, did, it didn't. It's very heady, actually. It helps being sober listening to this project. I mean, to be fair, all music is better while stoned. Like, it, it ain't lying, but... Doesn't mean you're consuming it the way that I feel like is the most enjoyable. Um, but anyways, yes, uh, it starts off with this weird skit. However, I'm going to make another point that listening to this whole album, nothing really surprised me all that much uh, because I feel like there is so much. So like this song in a nutshell is a good example, but I just don't think that while listening to the entire album, it's that shocking that it turns into a song. It's not just an interlude, but still regardless. I uh, think it's a good example, even even with that. Oh, day, how am I gonna do this? Yeah, man? don't wait you know. for her, man. Don't wait for her. I'll tell you what. Beef rap would have been a better example. You might actually be right about that. Yeah, yeah don't wait you know. for her, man. Don't wait for her. Here you will find food for your body. But at last, how you think it? Thanks for the drink. All right, song finally starts. Beef rap, commit to getting teeth cattle. Heart attack, heart disease. It ain't no starting back once arteries start to squeeze. Uh, I I think that this works a bit better just because it's so long. <laughs> uh, that I feel like this one, even in the context of the album, knowing that there's skits and whatnot, it's like you're sitting through this and it's like, oh shit, yo, it's actually a song. Yo, this one's actually based off your mom as well. This ain't a hard song, but I personally believe that Kate Bush's Night of the Swallow is one of the best examples of a song transforming into something bigger than it once was. Uh, the soft piano with roaring vocals from Kate, which suddenly transitions to a more upbeat Celtic folk uh, music-inspired bit for the chorus. Oh. The night doesn't like <laughs> Yeah, it's that girl from Stranger Things. Made famous by Stranger Things. Oh, here we go.
Yeah, I mean, I get it. It's kind of like the Bjork example, but a little less extreme. Um, but I feel like, again, with Kate Bush, I expect theatrics. I expect, you know, um, things to kind of swell up in a way. Um, so it's not like it's super shocking to me. It makes sense that it's a very dynamic song. So I don't know if I fully agree with this, um, but still, I, I guess I guess I can see it. Blood of the Fang by Clipping. This is the first Clipping song I had heard. Uh, I wasn't sure what to expect when I first heard that uh, Sam Wayman sample. Maybe something a little pretentious and preachy, but no, I'm immediately hit in the face with one of the gnarliest bits of bass I've ever heard in a song. Take it through one of the best rap songs I've heard in a long while. Uh, it still gets me every time how hard and sudden the transition is from that intro sample to the hard-hitting production and immaculate song. I can I co-sign anyone who says Hazard Duty Pay by JPEG Mafia. Ooh, I never allow people to do doubles, but you know what? This this wasn't a double. This was suggesting another really good example. So, it's a really good song. By the Christians, it is written that in the black mouth in it, addiction to blood, blood. Drink it up. Yeah, time to come back. What up? Blood. Too long to get they bullshit together. 50 years bad enough. Blood. So what's inside? Never been too simple. Syrup, he's hip because he can't taste his own. Blood. They taught you when you went to kindergarten. What you need to know is in the... Blood. Queen Angela done told y'all. Still here. So this is a perfect example. This is exactly what I'm looking for as the very beginning is super unpredictable and you don't really know exactly where it's going to go. But when it kicks, it kicks. It completely subverts expectations. It goes above and beyond and it's amazing. This is perfect. A perfect example. And I feel like we're getting back on track with this one. Me and Your Mama. This is another one based off of uh, uh, Your Mom, of course, uh, by Childish Gambino. It opens with this very laid-back R&B-style ballad, and this uh, and it's backed with backup singers a few minutes in. The song smacks you with this beat drop and fat electric guitar riff. First time I heard it, my jaw dropped. Got in shit, got in shit, got in shit. DJ Kevin, we the best. Who? We know. When do they stop tuning their instruments and play the music? The car is on fire, and there's no driver at the wheel. Hey, hey, what's up, Tinder chat? And the sewers are all muddy. There's a lot of bass. Oh my god. So yeah, I mean, it continues on. I'm, I'm going to stop it there and say that, yeah, from the very beginning to where it ends up, uh, it does absolutely amazing. I mean, it, it is exactly that. It's super submersive, but it also is split into segments. You can consider it an intro, but I do think that, like, where it ends up going is completely, you know, unexpected on a first listen. So even though I'm not, like, so crazy head over heels for this album, I, I do like it. It's just, like, I feel like some people are like, oh, it's the greatest piece of music ever made. It's good. It's pretty good. Um, I, regardless, my opinion aside, great example. I'm so glad this is on Spotify now. Oh my god, this song is so good. This album's too popular though. It's not even gonna be on the, on the thing. Uh, yeah, this is a great example right here. So yeah, super smooth sample uh, leading into a fantastic payoff. Really, really good example. I don't know if this is exactly what you're looking for, but the most surprisingly good example I can think of is, huh? Oh, goodbye by Death Dynamic Shred. Oh, I, I mean, I, I know Death Dynamic Shred. I was like, huh? Samples, uh, Living in the City from Sonic R, a somewhat campy song, but it recontextualizes the song uh, to be a beautiful but deeply sad vaporwave song. It's generally just very good. Um, maybe if it's this category uh, because you question the sample choice at the beginning, it's less than appreciated while listening, and then appreciate it later while listening, uh, although it's probably just more conceptual than transitioning to an ex uh, ex Sorry if I suck at reading, by the way. I need glasses, like real glasses. These glasses aren't real glasses, you see? Nothing real about these fucking things. <laughs> DJ Kevin, we the best, we the best, we the best. Alright, I'm waiting 
for it to transform now. Alright, I'm awake. Okay, well at this point it's just the song. Where's the subversion? Yeah, I feel like if six minutes into the song I don't actually know what the example's supposed to be, then maybe it doesn't fit the role as much as I wish it did. Goodbye Sober Day by Mr. Bungle is a perfect Trojan horse. Starts off frantic enough with the staccato vocals and hectic xylophones. See, here's the thing about this. Nothing could prepare you for the middle section of the song. This song is so off the wall and bizarre that it's hard to even, like, pin down what any segment of it is supposed to be or mean. Like, everything about this song is, um, like, challenging expectations. So I think that this is a good example, but also maybe too good of an example. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Songs of Night Out of Ten. It is. I I really like it. You see what I'm saying? Like we ain't even at the weird part yet. Song sounds like it's on shuffle. Alone at the edge of a universe. Like a crappy um, CD that skips all the time. See, here's the amazing part about this song and why I personally love it so much is it's one of those that, like, the more you hear it, the more it actually kind of makes sense. It's it's fucking weird. It's a weird song. It still shocks me every time. I love a lot of the pieces of here. I think this song is brilliant. It's also so hard to say because I again I feel like this is such a perfect example because every part of this damn song is a subversion. Every part of this song is like it, it's it's throwing you around all over the place. That I wonder if uh, it even fits in this prompt. There's no setup for expectation. I mean there is. It's just it gets blown out the window real fast, and then every continuous piece is also uh, completely blown out the window. We already heard beef rap. Francis the Mute by Mars Volta. This one's just a jump scare, straight up. This is originally supposed to be a first track on the album of the same name. Had to get cut due to restrictions. The song begins with four and a half minu uh, minutes of an abrasive soundscape before the band finally comes to deliver some of my favorite Volta moments. Uh, in my opinion, the song always worked better in the context of the full album. Yeah. This one's kind of a strange one. Oh, the single. Maybe I don't know what this is. When do they stop tuning their instruments and play the music? That is the music! I'm gonna go Well, I'm here. I mean, I'm just gonna... You know what I'm saying? Like, ain't much I can say. I'm just waiting. Ascension! Millennium! Oh, yo, something's happening in the song. All right, we're four and a half minutes in. There it is. I know a bunch of people want me to listen to this whole song. This shit ain't gonna happen, all right? It's called Trojan Samples. Makes fucking sense about this one. I mean, five and a half minutes of just... It does add to the vibe, though. I mean, I'm not going to criticize it. I actually think that it changes how the entire song feels. Um, no, please. No, no. You got to hear the whole thing. Listen to the damn song. Oh, my God. You got to hear the whole thing. It's not the point of the video, goddammit. If the video was listening to the whole goddamn song, then we would listen to the whole goddamn song. I'm just saying. Could have created the whole vibe in one-fourth of that time? No, it could not have. I don't actually agree with that at all. I think that... Uh, stretching it out to this length is what the vibe is. It's taking it to an extreme. There's a reason why it feels so grand and large when it comes in. It's because you you were waiting. It's because it makes you wait. It makes sense, actually, a lot. Thank you, Dirty. 
Rainbow Six. <laughs> Rainbow Six by JPEG Mafia is the perfect example. First 50 seconds are left empty except for that crying guy meme stretched out to uh, and auto-tuned to a beat. And that one song where the guy says that one word, uh, it makes you think you're going to hear a Peggy idea. It doesn't translate in song form very well, but then the tag comes in at hardest drop of all time. Yeah, the song is amazing. I love this song. I think this is a really good example because it's just such a weird track. It's like, why are there so many JPEG Mafia songs? Because the guy knows... How to make a surprising uh, track. Oh, my fucking ears. This shit is loud. Very distorted drums. Ouch. I take a stub, grab your fucking up, nigga, put you in a truck. What you niggas need? Crack, coke, weed. See that feeling you have of what the hell is this? Why am I listening to this? Turning into a really hard song is exactly what the prompt today is, and it's why I feel like this is another perfect example. See, I, I don't know. I'm so mentally engaged throughout this song, I could just keep listening to it uh, till the very end. Great example. Amazing. Perfect example. Oh, to the Mets, the electronic notes and dissonant guitars sound like nothing else in the album, and then the melody comes in. I think it's a Mellotron, the musical equivalent of the sun rising over the horizon. I know you had a spiritual reaction to it in your video. Yes, it's a good example. As it starts off, and I'm like, what the hell is this? It's dog shit. That's actually pretty good. And you're right, this sounds like nothing else on the album, so... Mentioned. Anyways, you get the point. Electronics going into a really beautiful change. I think it's a great example. It's my ball to the example. Anyways, peace out.